Good afternoon, church family. I'm proud that you've tuned in to our Bible study this Wednesday night. We're continuing our study on the devil and what he is and who he is and what he does. And we're going to just go to our next part, which is the serpent is a man. We've showed where the devil is a man in the Garden of Eden, and we've showed where he was back there in the Garden of Eden, rather, and we've showed the power that he has. In Hebrews 2 and 14, him that hath the power of death, that is the devil. So the devil is a man with worldwide power, and um, he's coming back one more time in, on this world. So just to start this out um, this evening, We'll go to Revelation 20 and 2. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil. So that defined him. He called him the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil. And he put a conjunction here, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, we're going to focus tonight on that the serpent is a man. Now, a lot of folks is kind of under the impression that Eve was standing around talking to a a snake, like a rattlesnake or a copperhead or a black snake. And, uh, of course, you know, a lot of us are like me would, wouldn't would stick around long to carry on a conversation with that type of a snake. To be honest with you, there's a whole lot worse snakes out there than copperheads and rattlesnakes. And that's what we're going to show you tonight. Now, Genesis 3 and 1 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. Now, I've never heard a snake talk, not in the circus, not anywhere. So a lot of times we need to realize that God uses something natural to show what type of spirit someone has. Remember, Jesus told his his people to be wise as serpents, but to be harmless as doves. But then he said, "Be," but he warned them to, to watch out for men, because that's who he was uh, talking about: the serpent, the dove, the wolf, the sheep. It's all a spirit that is in somebody. You no, know, Paul said, "After my departing." Will grievous wolves enter in, enter in among you, not sparing the flock? So he said, men of your own self shall arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. So you can see what that wolf was there. It was a devouring spirit in a man that wanted to separate God's people. And of course, God's always typed his people as sheep. My sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So and we also type Jesus as the shepherd, the great shepherd of the sheep. So God uses something natural to show what spirit that somebody has. Now how the serpent is uh, slippery and slides around all crafty. That's what he called this man that was in the Garden of Eden, that old serpent. And here we'll find out why he called him that. Because he said, yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So this serpent knew what God had told Adam and Eve. And he did this. He perverted God's word. That's what Paul said they would do. Speaking perverse things. He said, you will not surely die. Now God had already told them that they would die that day that they ate of the forbidden fruit. And they did die. Because God was true. Let God be true and every man a liar. I want you to take note that there's nothing on this earth that can tell a lie but a human being. There never has been anything on this earth that could tell a lie but a human being. So let's get in a little bit more to this serpent. Genesis 3 and 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And God, and he said, which was God, who told thee that thou was naked? Now, if it was just Adam and Eve back there in that garden, why would God ask who told them? And notice he didn't say what told you, but who? Because that serpent was a man. It was a person. And he was 
subtle and crafty, and he worked deceit to change God's word. And uh, he went on to say here in the 11th verse, Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? So he knew something had happened to Adam and Eve. For Adam to be afraid and to know that he was naked, of course, he had to get wisdom. And that's what he got from the tree, the, uh, the knowledge of good and wisdom. Now, the tree is the man, but that serpent represented the spirit in that man. I hope you can see that. Psalms 58 and 3. And here, it's, we're just going to define to you that the serpent is a man in brief here tonight on this subject. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth the ear. So who was this talking about? It was talking about wicked people. Now, it said they are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Now, we know that that's not a natural baby. No natural baby ever come here speaking lies as soon as they was born. Most everybody come here crying, didn't they? And of course, it takes a few years to learn how to speak and to talk and to walk. So this wasn't talking about a natural birth or a natural baby. It was talking about a spiritual birth and a spiritual serpent. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. So you notice what always accompanies a serpent is a lie. Their poison is the poison of a serpent. So that poison was the lie they told. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth the ear. Now, Isaiah 59 and 4, none calleth for justice nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. So he's talking again here about the wicked, the serpent. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs. Well, a cockatrice is a serpent. So a serpent breeds serpents. And they do that with their lies. And let me read that again. They speak lies and conceive mischief. And bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth. So if you partake of that lie, from a spiritual serpent, you'll die spiritually. And that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. So once that egg is crushed, so if some one were to plant and sow a lie in your heart and we let it stay there and we don't let the truth come in long enough, well, that lie will hatch out in us. And that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Well, once the egg is crushed, it can never be put back together. So that's the danger of listening to someone who's preaching lies or changing God's word like that old serpent did in the beginning. It's very important to know what you're listening to is the truth because it's easy to be deceived if we don't know the truth. But Jesus said you should know the truth and the truth will make you free. Well, if the truth will make you free, then a lie will bind you. So that's the importance. Now, Isaiah 14 and 29, Rejoice not thou, whole Palestine, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice. So out of that serpent root come forth another serpent. And his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. So the serpent's root keeps breeding serpents. So let's find out what the serpent's root is. First Timothy 6 and 10 for the love of money is the root of all evil. That's where evil started. It started in that old serpent. It was his spirit that he had and his love for money and power. It's the root of all evil. No, God's not the father of evil. It was the serpent in the beginning. He's the root of all evil and it comes from the love of money which while some have coveted after have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So that love of money is the serpent's root and out of that keeps coming for serpents. That's uh, what the Bible says. Psalms 140 and 3, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. So that lie is their poison. Their tongues 
They've sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips sealer. So this is the wicked. And it refers to the wicked many times, many times as being serpents. And their lies as eggs. Of course, and it takes a serpent to breed a serpent. But, you know, it takes being born of the water and the spirit to be a child of God, to be one of his sheep. But it takes being born of a lie to be one of this serpent's children. Matthew 3 and 7, speaking of John the Baptist, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers. He called them a whole generation of vipers because they come from their daddy in the beginning all the way down. They're the generation of the wicked. Of course, and it took a lie to, to make somebody a serpent. O generation of vipers. Now, who was he speaking to? The Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were men, but John the Baptist called them vipers. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Well, John knew he was the only one sin at that time, and he knew he hadn't warned them. So he didn't know why them men were down there. They were down there just to see what was going on. The religious rulers of that time wanted to hang on to their, their form of religion and didn't want to hear the truth and accept the truth. John called them vipers. And Jesus said the same thing in Matthew 23 and 32. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? So you can see what Jesus thought about them serpents, that generation of vipers. But you remember, he said, fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. So these were human beings, but they had the wrong spirit about them. And I think you remember in the Bible, God talked about how that the fathers persecuted the prophets and how their children was persecuting the church at that time. So you can see that that serpent, that old serpent was a human being that changed God's word, that, that spoke lies and preached lies. You know, it says no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And his ministers as the ministers of righteousness. They look real close to the real thing. But if you listen, if you listen close, they're only after one thing, and that's the love of money is the root of all evil. But somebody who will tell you the truth just like it is, free of charge, well, then that's your friend, brothers and sisters. But if it's somebody that, you know, speaking soft words and just changing God's word to make you feel good, well, that's not your friend. So just remember when God uses things like serpents and wolves and sheep and dove and lions, like he called Jesus the lion of the tribe of Judah. No, but he was also a sheep before her shears and dumb. He opened not his mouth when he was at sacrifice. But when God raised him from the dead, that lion started to roar out of that Jerusalem and out of Judah. When God raised him from the dead, it became the day of the Lord. And when he returns, brothers and sisters, he's not coming back as a lamb, but he'll come as a lion, the bright and the morning star, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So I hope you can see that this evening in our subject on the devil. We just trust that you'll pray for us, and we trust that you'll tune in next time, and we'll continue this on the dragon is a man. So God bless you all, and have a, have a good evening, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.